I am really very happy to introduce Patik Shah, CorelDRAW Master and Strategic Training Partner for CorelDRAW in India. Since childhood, Pratik has always been very good at expressing his ideas and imaginations in a creative form. While studying math and physics at Bombay University, he decided to take computer classes in graphic design and soon realized his love of design and of Corel Draw. To learn more about Patrick, visit corel.com slash coreldrawmasters or you can also visit his website www.graphics.co.en. Pratik, welcome. Would you like to start? Yes, Cecil. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining this webinar. And I hope uh, you guys will enjoy the new features to be discussed over here. And let me start with uh, what topics are to be covered tonight. To create a page layout in Corel Graphics Suite X6. The main topics which we will be covering tonight are baseline grids, placeholder texts, left and right master pages, page numbering, how to create styles and style sets, and color styles. Just to get a basic idea, these are the basic page layout terms that we use while creating layouts in CorelDRAW. Body copy is the main text that uh, any story would have. We have a subhead which goes within the story and there is a caption part which goes by the images or the photographs in the story. We have a blurb and there is a folio and footer. Now, to start up with this, let's start with a basic document setup window and define the size of your publication or a magazine. I'll start by let's say 9 inches by 12 inches. It will be a CMYK document because we are creating it for a print media at 300 dpi and I'll click OK. Now just to give a general view, I've created what the final look and feel would be for this page layouts. This is how we can create layouts in Corel Graphics with X6 with the new features like uh, styles, style sets and baseline grids. And let's start with the first page. The first thing we need to do is how to set up margins for the document. Let's say this is my zero marker. I set up my margins from here. Let's say I want to give half inch from left. I'll give half inch from right. I want about one inch from top and about three fourth inch from bottom. This is my basic uh, framing of my page wherein my contents would fit in. Also let's place some guidelines for the columns that my magazine will have. Basically a three column layout. I'll add at three inches and another one at six inches. Just to give a little bit of margin of a quarter inch on both the sides. This is the basic framing of a page layout and uh, let's start with object manager. What I will do is I will lock my guidelines so that I cannot, I, sh I should, I don't select the guidelines by mistake during the designing. I'll snap to guidelines. Let's start with the first text box over here.
initially we will create a very raw layout and then we will just style the layout with styles and other effects so as to give the final look to the document. This is how a raw layout would look. I create a text frame. with two columns, let's say, I'll go to two, width of one column would be 2.5 inches and this is a better width between the two columns, all right. I'll create one more text box for the third column which will hold the credits for my page. Now Corel Draw Graphics with X6 came with a very nice feature to insert a dummy text into an empty text frame. When your contents are not yet ready for the final publishing and you are stuck with the final contents, you can always use a dummy text within, within the text frame. What you can do is simply right click on the frame and you can say insert placeholder text. This will fill your empty frame with some dummy text just to get a feel of you know how your final document would look like. Now here is a box that we created which will have a photograph or a picture and we need to wrap the text around this picture. So maybe we'll give some text wrapping here of a straddle text. This is import the picture that I want. And I will place this picture and power clip in this box. Here is the third column that will hold the credits for this page. I have some text already saved just to import it over here for the credits. I'll just copy paste the text from here. All right. Now let's uh, style this page with uh, styles and style sets. Before this, uh, I'll tell you what uh, style and style sets are. Basically, style and style sets are a kind of uh, predefined settings that you can apply to objects. And how to create styles and style sets? Let's go through one by one. Let's say. We will create a style with for each of these uh, sections of the document, body copy, subhead, caption, blurb and folio or footer. So let's start with body copy. I'll go to tools, open up the object styles docker over here. Here it is. Now what is the difference between a style and a style set? Now a style will hold only one single attribute of any type. Let's say a character or a paragraph or maybe a color but not multiple. 
whereas in a style set you can define multiple attributes in one single style. If you can uh, select a font, font properties, paragraph styles, line spacing, paragraph spacing, it can have any kind of attributes assigned to a style set. So for a body copy let us create a style set because we will be using multiple properties for paragraph styles. We we'll create a plus sign to create a new style set and let us name them body copy. From here I'll give you a character and here I can define the font that I want for this particular style. Font size, color of the text. This is the style set that we have created. Now I just have to select the paragraph text and I double click on this style to apply this style to this paragraph frame. Now as you can see the font and font size has all changed according to the style that we have defined over here. Same way we need to create a style for credits over here. Let's say we create a, because we are having only a simple character properties over here, we'll define a style with character properties. This will have, let's say, a little lighter font with a very small font size of 7 points. I'll give a little different color, let's say red. And I will assign all caps attribute to this style. I'll name this as credits title and assign this to this frame. Now as you can see the credits title has been applied to this whole text frame. Now we don't want the same style to be applied to the actual names of the editor or managing editor or whatever. So we need to create another style as a child of this credit title over here. What a child style does is it takes all the properties from the parent style and you can then change the attributes as per required settings which will override the parent style. So let's say we'll name it as credits for name. I'll change the color to black. Font size will keep the same. And maybe we'll change the casing to small caps. And I need to highlight whichever part of text I want to apply the style. Or another way is you can directly take the shaper tool to select multiple characters at once by shift clicking and dragging across all the characters. and then simply double clicking on the style will apply the style to that selection. Right,
So this is how you can apply multiple styles to one single paragraph text frame so that it has multiple text attributes in one single frame. And now once the style is applied, you don't have to bother about changing the properties or attributes for each and every selection. Once you change the properties in style, it will apply to all the places where the style is applied. Let's say we change the color of this credit title to something else. Maybe we'll give a So just you change the color or any attribute in the style, automatically it is reflected to all the places where the style is applied. Now let's start with uh, this editor's desk. I'll create one more style for this character. Make some it's a little bigger font size, let's say eleven points. Bold and maybe red color. So I think something got mixed up. Okay. Looks like there's some kind of a glitch or something. All right, got it. Twelve points, red color, bold, and now I'll apply this style to this text box. Now the biggest challenge in a page layout was that uh, until X5 there was a very challenging uh, issue wherein the text would not uh, align in a proper baseline. Just to show you an example, I have just created a snapshot from X5. I'll show you what the issue was. Here it is. Whenever you had a word wrap kind of a thing in a multi-column text, the text in the second column was misaligned with the first column. And this was for a document-wide issue. And this was a document-wide issue which was uh, occurring also for the linked frames you are using. So there is a very uh, new feature uh, introduced in X6 to get rid of that problem which is called as baseline grid. Now we'll have to set up a baseline grid from options, grid. This is the baseline grid settings. This is the spacing between two grid, grid lines which is let's say we set it as a 12 point distance and uh, one inch from top, I'll say snap to grid and show grid enabled. Now if you see the text is still not aligned to the baseline if you can see. For the text to align to the baseline you need to select the text frame, go to text and say align to baseline grid. What happens here is now all the text is aligned to this one baseline which is a document wide feature. Same thing we can do for this text. I will align this to baseline grid. So the text is aligned at the same baseline. You can see here it's 
exactly on the same line. So this is how a baseline grid works. But you have to make sure you have to enable align to baseline grid for each and every text box you create in Corel Draw. Even if you have a linked frame, you need to apply align to baseline grid for each and every text frame manually. Otherwise, it won't align to the baseline grids. So this is how uh, we create some styles and style sets. Let's uh, try with uh, blurb now. Let's say I want to add a blurb over here. I will create a rectangle which will act as a dummy object. Straddle text. Now I would remove all the fill and outline for this object because I just wanted to create an empty space in between of this paragraph text frame and I will create another text frame with some dummy text. Here let's say we create one more style, we'll call it blurb. With a little bigger font size. Let's say bold italic and some bluish color. And I'll apply this to this text frame here. Now, if you can notice here, there is a little bit of a not so good looking spacing you know here you can see a more spacing and here there is a little less spacing what we can do here is kind of use a little bit of a hack over here and instead of using a word wrap to this power clip box I'll send I'll remove the wrapping from that object and I'll create one dummy object of the same size by double clicking on the shift double clicking on the rectangle and I'll say no fill, no outline with a straddle text and I will just size the rectangle a little bit wider to manually adjust the spacing so that it looks a little bit uh, proportionately uh, better. So this is baseline grids. Now let's go to the next topic. We'll add one more blank page after this. Let's see how we can create multiple masters. Until X5 we had only one master page which was common for both left and right pages which was kind of a you know a not so freedom for a page layout say, jobs uh, like you had uh, different positions for page numbers on left pages and different positions for page numbers on right pages which was not possible until X5 because of the one common master page. Now in X6 you have multiple master pages which can be defined for odd and even pages. So I'll go to object manager. This is my second page and at the bottom of the screen here there is a button which says new master layer only for even pages. When I click this it creates a new master layer. I will name it as master right pages. I will go to first page. Now 
there is one more button which says new master layer for odd pages. I will create one more master layer for left master. So now I have two master pages, one dedicated to all the odd pages in my document and one is all for the even pages of the document. So let's start with the odd pages. This is my first page and let's say here on the left hand side I want uh, my website address to appear on all the pages of the booklet. And I'll use some font sizes, a lighter gray tone. And same thing, I'll use another text box for creating a contents for right hand side. Let's say I give a folio number, whatever is the issue number of the publication. Whatever text which is common across the document can be placed over here. And then over here I'll insert a page number which will start from page number one and start on page one. So I have a page number over here. Again I will style this uh, with uh, some fonts. Bold. I will make this uh, right align. Unbold this. So this is the page number for all the odd pages. Now let's go to the even page. I just have to swap the positions for these two boxes. What I'll do is I will select both the objects and paste it on the second page and I just need to swap the positions of the two boxes. I'll change the alignment to left and this one to right. So now you can see here as soon as we pasted the page number object on the page second page this has been incremented by one to page number two. So every time I add a new page now you can see on the third page it's again on the right hand side with page number three, page four accordingly. So this is how you can use multiple odd and even masters to manipulate the objects at different positions. Now there's one uh, another nice little trick we can use sh with styles over here for page numbering. Let's say we create a style for character with uh, same font size 10 bold and I will add a frame background color to this page number let's say a little darker red color and the text color will be white. I'll select this page number and apply this style over here. So what happens here is the page number takes a background color as a frame. 
Now this looks a little odd. So here also again we can use a trick by inserting some special characters like let's say and space before the page number, actual number and after the page number. So that it creates kind of a box around the page number. Same goes for the page number on left hand side. I apply the same style and I need to insert again and space before and after the character. So this will automatically create a frame for all the pages for whichever new page is added. So this is how we create styles, style sets, left and right masters, automatic page numbering to create a nice layout. Let's start with another page, page 2. This is the way, this is the page we are going to now create. We create one rectangle over here and use the contour inside. I will break this apart. The outer box I will give a grey outline. Inner box I will give white and I will input the picture for this frame. Now again I will create a paragraph frame over here which will have the contents from let's say I will take this text and paste it over here. Now I will create a style for let's say character to define this section, I will use the same font with a little big font size, bold with a red color. And I will apply to all the sections of this index page. I'll create one more character style for story title. With a little small font size, bold and black color. And I'll apply this to all the story titles all right now i'll create a child style for this which will take the same properties from its parent story title for story description I'll reduce the font size just a little bit to 9 and this will be a normal style and I'll apply this style to all the story descriptions. this way. Same 
like we did for the page numbering, what I have done is I have inserted a special character before and after the page number so I can apply the same page number style to this selection. this way for all these four characters I'll have to just uh, erase the style. So this is how you can use style and style sets in a color graphics to X6. Uh, I think I'm running out of time I guess. Uh, I'll show you one more thing which is very useful for page layouting. What happens is in your publication when you have multi-page document and one of the page is having a full page advertisement. Like this one. Now what happens in this cases is, in such cases, you can see the footer over here, page number and the website URL, which generally we don't want on the full page advertisements. So we have to hide this master of objects from only this one particular page. So what I can do is on this page number 3, I will switch to a current page view over here and I need to disable the master layer by editability, disable the printing for this layer and also disable the visibility of this layer. Again I'll switch back to all pages view and now you can see all the master objects are gone from this layer, this page. So this is how you can manipulate with the layers. as you can see in this document that I had created earlier. Now with the linked text frames, this is again a very good enhancement in X6 wherein I can create a linked text frame. Let's say I start with this at the bottom of the hanger, click on this rectangle and create another text box. Again at the bottom of the hanger, I'll drag this from here. Because I have this text object here, I'll just reduce this text object. And I'll continue this text here. So the text flows from the first frame to the second to the third and I can again drag this to the fourth page here. So this is how you can create a linked text frame. Now in the first frame I just have to right click and I insert placeholder text and it fills up all the frames with some dummy text. I'll apply the same style that uh, we've created earlier for body copy. This is the body copy. We have applied the style. Now you can see wherever a paragraph, new paragraph starts up, there is a left indentation applied automatically. This can be handled from paragraph settings within the style itself. So what happens is once the style is applied, if I change my style 
and this indentation back to zero. That's it. And instead, I want let's say a space before the paragraph, maybe two hundred percent. So I get a paragraph spacing between all the paragraphs automatically across all the linked text frames. Here it is. And maybe towards the end of the article you might want uh, again if, if as you can see the text is not aligned to the baseline over here because we need to enable text alignment for baseline grid to each and every text frame manually. Yeah. Now you can see it is perfectly aligned with the baseline. I can create, uh, let's say, one more style which will have uh, the same font with the font size of uh, 10. I'll give normal italics white fill and in, in the frame color instead of solid I can also use any fountain fill. Let's say from top blue to cyan and this is the author's name over here maybe. I'll highlight this text and apply this style to this one. Again, we'll have to use this click to insert a empty character such that when just to give a padding kind of thing to the selection. So these are all different ways how you can create styles and style sets. And I think I've covered almost all the topics. This is the final result that uh, one can create using Corridor Graphics or X6. This is a cover page for a magazine. And then this was the actual contents file. So using the styles and style sets, you can decorate the page very easily and very quickly with different settings. I think this is it for this uh, webinar, I guess. And I'll wait for the questions from anyone. Cecil? Yeah, sorry, I was on mute. Yeah, yeah, yeah um, we, have, um, we have some great questions here. Um, so let's start with the question. We have about 11 minutes. Um, so uh, the one of the first question is regarding uh, the styles uh, on style set. Um, the first question is uh, Yogita is asking um, if she can use style on style set in uh, CorelDRAW Graphics with X5. There is no style sets uh, kind of thing in X5. This was a new feature introduced in X6, mm -hmm. style sets. Mm -hmm. So there was a, uh, no, so I don't think there is a feature in X5 that can be used as a style. Okay. Only there was a, there was a color styles in X5 which can be used in a, to a certain extent but with not such a flexibility like in X6. Okay. Okay. 
Thank you. Uh, second question is about the page numbering. Uh, Duane has uh, missed when you showed uh, how to uh, put the page numbering. Uh, could you perhaps uh, redo the, the demo about uh, page numbering in session? All right. I'll create a new document. Okay, now generally page numbering is uh, uh, when you have a different positioning for left and right pages, you need to create separate master layers for left and right pages. So let's say I'm on the first page, this is the odd page number. So here at the bottom of the object manager, there is a button to create a master layer for odd pages. I'll create, I'll add a second page, even page, and I'll add one more layer for master, left master pages. Now this way I can control the position of page numbers on both the left and right pages. What I can do is I can create a text box which will have my folio or the magazine name. Then I can add my issue folio number. And which will be followed by a page number. So I will go to layout, insert page number on active layer. This will add page number to my first layer. I will style my page number accordingly. And I just need to copy paste this object on my left master and accordingly change the alignment or the placement of the object. So now for every page that is added, automatically you will get the page numbers. Just Excellent. Is that it? Yeah, it's it. And uh, Dwen is uh, thanking you. She just uh, he's just sent okay. me a, a, a thank you message. Um, right. Does uh, X5 uh, um, has the same feature of page numbering, or is it exclusive to X6? No, this is exclusive to X6. Okay, thank you. Um, um, Yogita is asking about removing how to remove master page object from a certain page if you can explain or re-explain that. Uh, from master page? Yeah, how to remove master page objects from a certain page? You cannot remove uh, master objects for, from a certain page. You can hide objects for some particular page and restrict it from printing or viewing. Like for example, uh, this is page number 3. I'll just enable the contents back over here. Now this is the page and this is the website address at the bottom of the page and here is the footer page number and folio number and everything which I don't want to be printed or displayed on page number 3. So on this page on the object manager I need to switch to current page view so I get all the layers for this particular page, page 3. Now here I simply have to disable master page contents by visibility. Don't forget the printing and editable. What happens is sometimes if you disable the visibility but leave the printing on, what will happen is while publishing the document or printing the document, those objects even though they are hidden and not visible, they would be printed in the final document. So to avoid this, you need to be sure that you enable the or disable the printing icon also. That's Excellent. Well, um, thank you very much, Patrick. Um, yeah. Another question, uh, Silvio, um, it seems that he has missed a certain part of your webinar. Could you perhaps uh, uh, show um, again how to add color to page numbering and uh, how to repeat the steps? Color? Yeah, 
how to add oh, yeah. color okay. to page numbering. One is, uh, I'll, I'll create some blank pages over here, let's say. Uh, on page number one, I have a master layer, left master, and on page number two, I'll have a right master. Now let's say on page number, I create a text box. I can insert the page number here and there are two ways you can color the page number either directly from the color palette this way or you can create a object style for the character which holds the font size bold white and I have a color frame over here or you can apply a style to the page number. So there are two ways to color the page number, either directly from the color palette or you can assign a style or a style set to the page number. So if you can go to the third page, you can see it's already applied everywhere on all the odd pages. I need to only copy paste those to my even pages, change the alignment and the placement of the object and I have on all the pages. Again here when you are using a frame background for the page number, I would suggest you add a space before and after the page number so as to create a box kind of a effect for both left and right master. Could you just uh, redo the, the last sequence? It seems that you, um, somebody mentioned that you went too fast. Uh, which sequence? Like the, 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 just the last one you have done. Uh, I'll show again from start or what? Um, no, I think it's mainly the, the last part. Uh, Perhaps if you can show what you have done uh, a little slower. I, I'll do it again maybe. I'll let okay. me be better. Okay. Just about the invisible uh, invisible uh, character. Ah, okay. So once you insert the page number on the active pages, now if I'm using a style to color my page number, now this looks a little unprofessional because of the width of the frame. So what we can do is highlight the cursor just before the actual page number, go to text menu, insert formatting code and I insert an N space before the page number and one more same character after the page number, this one. So it creates kind of a box across the page number. This way. Is this what uh, this was needed? Yeah, I think we are good. Yeah, uh, excellent. Um, I think we can take two more questions. Um, how do you change the space? between lines of copy? How do you lines change the space between lines of copy? Uh, I'm not getting the question exactly. Um, lines of? Yeah, I uh, know. Um, how to change the space? So between the different lines of a copy you have some space. How do you change uh, the space? You mean to say uh, line spacing? For the text frame? Exactly. How do you change line spacing? Now if you've applied a style to the text, you can change the line spacing from the paragraph uh, over here. This is the before and after paragraph and this is the line spacing over here. I can increase to 120. So this is the 
automatically it uh, is updated on the text frame, the line spacing. Is this what? Uh, yeah, I think so. Works? Yeah, yeah, I think so. This is the line spacing property in the under the paragraph section of the style. Okay. So this is the. I I I I don't think. I hope uh, it's the same question. What I think so. Well, Deb has said thanks, so I guess that we have answered her question. Um, okay. Yeah, a last uh, perhaps question. Um, is there anywhere to set the align to baseline grid for text items as the default for a document? Or do you have to do it to every text box? It has to be done for each and every text frame manually. Okay. Yeah. Um, and perhaps a last quick question. Um, is there a facility in X6, in X5, regarding page numbering insertion, or um, what you have shown with the different features is, are, is exclusive to X6? Uh, it's for X6. These features are not there in X5. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you, um, Patrick. Um, I think we. Um, uh, we are getting there, um, just um, about out of time. So again, thank you very, very much, Patrick, for sharing some of your techniques today. Um, and thank you very much, everybody, uh, for your time and interest uh, in Correct Draw Graphics with X6. Um, I'd like to let you know that you, uh, if you'd like to have more information about X6, uh, you can download a free trial version um, on CorectDraw.com slash Corradro. Um, just for your information, also we have just launched uh, the subscription models uh, for X6. Uh, you can still, of course, um, uh, pay um, by the, the, the box, um, X6 box, but also uh, you can rent now uh, Corradro Graphics with X6, um, either with a monthly payment or yearly payment. Uh, also, I'd like to inform you that um, we have launched a couple of months ago a new learning uh, resources center uh, called Corel Discovery Center. Um, just you will find different uh, uh, learning videos, uh, learning tutorials, tips, etc. Um, if you want to uh, check Discovery Center, um, just uh, visit corel.com slash discovery. Um, well, thank you very much, uh, everybody. Um, next um, uh, month, uh, we'll have a webinar uh, f done by uh, Joseph uh, Diaz. Uh, Joseph Diaz, um, if you remember, was the big uh, winner uh, of our Corel Draw uh, International Design Contest in uh, 2011. Um, so the webinar will take place um, on November, um, let me recheck the date, sorry for that, on November 8th. Um, on Joe Diaz, uh, we do a presentation around creating custom lettering effects in CredRaw. Um, so Thursday, November 8th, same time as of today, and, um, between 12 and 1 uh, p.m. Um, Eastern time. Um, and if you want to join this webinar, just go on crowd.com slash webinars and the, the crowd draw graphics suite page and you can register from there. Thank you again. Thank you very much, uh, everybody. And I wish you the, all the best for the rest of the day. Bye, everybody. Bye, Patrick. Thank you. Thanks very much.